So this is the Xiaomi Mi 8 SE. Okay, so this is the Xiaomi Mi 8 S. Okay, it's, we're getting there, we're getting there. Yeah, okay, this is it. This is the Xiaomi Mi 8 SE. Now I took those apples out for a reason, because in terms of design, this looks very familiar. We have the notch, we have the glass back, we have the camera layout, and the lack of a headphone jack anywhere to be found. Oh, also uh, the lack of a micro SD slot. So that's a thing. Either way, this Xiaomi Mi 8 SE, in terms of design, I find quite lazy to be honest, because this is what we are seeing most of the times when it comes to a design. An Apple design made in a budget Android phone. I'm not a fan of that. But apart from that, the Xiaomi Mi 8 SE is actually quite a good phone for its price. So let's talk about it in this full review of the Xiaomi Mi 8 SE. So the Xiaomi Mi 8 SE is priced around $250 and for that you get some great specs. It features the Snapdragon 710, you can get this phone in either 4GB or 6GB of RAM and you can get this in 64 or 128GB of internal memory. You will also get a decent 3120mAh battery and it runs on Android 8.1 with of course their own skin on top of it. And at the back you will find this dual camera setup as well, but we'll talk about that later. Now with specs like this it's honestly no surprise that the phone is fast and snappy, you won't have any problems on a day to day use. However I'm still not a fan of their own UI and this is the same for Huawei as well. In this version though it is the non global version, so I have to get Play Store on there manually. Now when it comes down to it, this phone just has a great value, its battery life is decent with depending on use being about 6 hours of screen on time and sometimes even reaching 7 hours. And a pretty good screen as well because it is a super AMOLED display with a size of 5.88 inches. So it is really nice, colors are nice, it has a nice saturation and punch to them, but it also keeps the blacks really black and viewing angles are fine. And then we get to the camera and if you haven't noticed by now, this is where I pay a lot of attention to. Mainly for two reasons. One, if you buy a device like this, you will get a fast enough device for your day to day use, which most people use their phone for. Most people don't really play those heavy games or anything like that. It is the camera most of the times where a phone makes a difference when it comes to specifications these days. So on this phone we get a dual camera system that does perform pretty good. Now for this dual system we have a 12 megapixel main camera with a 1.9 aperture and 1.4 URAM. And the second is a 5 megapixel camera that is used for depth sensing and it has a 2.0 aperture. This results in a camera that can take great pictures in normal lighting conditions with going for a bit more saturation giving the colors a nice punch to them. And in general I really have no issues with the camera at all, which also has a good dynamic range. However, sometimes in that same situation where good dynamic range matters, you can see some weird effects which is probably down to the software trying to get the best out of the shot itself. It is mostly also during sunset. And the result is that you can see some weird outlines, for instance at this soccer stadium. And yes, I had to zoom in a pretty large amount to show you this, but I could tell and I think you should know that as well. And about 4 times in these kind of situations, I just got a green screen when I took a picture. But apart from that, pictures that come out of this phone are really pleasing to look at. Now in low light where it doesn't perform bad, it isn't the best that I had for this price either. Where it captures enough details and keeps the colors pretty nice, it does have more grain to the shots itself. And then we get to video recording, which you can do up to 4K and 30 frames per second. And while stability looks a bit artificial, it does work well, keeping the same trend in the video as we've seen on the pictures itself. 
so a higher saturation and a pretty good dynamic range. So this is one of the better ones I have tested around this price when it comes to the stability itself. It really is quite impressive. Again though, it does look a bit artificial. So the Xiaomi Mi 8 SE, overall really a good device. It has the Snapdragon 710 and it is really fast. It has no problems with battery life. Uh, the display is one of the best you can get on the phone around this price. However, it has some issues like I stated before. Of course, we don't have a headphone jack. We don't have a micro SD slot, which I'm not a fan of. Don't remove features. I, I'm not a fan of that. Either way, I think the Xiaomi Mi 8 SE is a great value. However, however, it has one problem. And that is the Pocophone F1. The Pocophone F1 just costs $50 more than this one. And it offers the Snapdragon 845, 6 to 8 gigabytes of RAM, a 4000 mAh battery, a headphone jack, and a micro SD. Of course, the build is very different with no glass back. It is polycarbonate compared to this having a metal and glass back. But apart from that, the Poco F1, which is funny enough made by Xiaomi, well, part of Xiaomi, it, it seems to be on paper the more interesting phone. I haven't tried the phone myself yet, but from what I have seen, it is really an interesting phone. I heard that it had some issues with the vibrator motor being really tiny, so the feeling of the phone wasn't that nice when typing. But apart from that, when you look just at the spec sheets, that one looks really appealing compared to something like this. With that being said, this is still a great value. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think of the Xiaomi Mi 8 SE, and of course, talk to you guys in the next.